to drop his investigation of Michael Flynn, which James Comey did not do. President Trump then fired the FBI director. Since then, the president has not stopped tampering with his next two FBI directors. The president was asked about that today after a story in Axios reported that the current FBI director threatened to resign after facing pressure from the Trump administration to get rid of deputy director Andrew McCabe. No, he didn't at all. He did not. He did not even a little bit. Nope. And he's going to do a good job. Are you concerned about this new leadership of the FBI? Thanks, everyone. Let's see how it all works out. Shortly after the president said that today, word began to leak out of the Justice Department about how it's all working out. The Washington Post is reporting that two new officials will join the FBI, both replacing people who served under James Comey, former U.S. Attorney Dana Buente, who briefly served as acting attorney general after Sally Yates was fired, will be the FBI's new general counsel replacing James Baker. And Zachary Harmon will become the FBI director's new chief of staff, replacing Jim Rubicki, who was the chief of staff under James Comey. The most important news about the FBI came later today in a stunning report from The Washington Post about what the president said shortly after he fired FBI Director James Comey. Between the Comey firing and Senate confirmation of Christopher Wray as the next FBI director, the FBI's deputy director served as the acting director of the FBI. Soon after he became the acting director, Andrew McCabe was summoned to the Oval Office for what the Washington Post reports was a get-to-know-you meeting. There is no indication in the Washington Post report that anyone other than the president and the acting director, McCabe, were in the Oval Office for this meeting, which did not go well. The Post reports, the two men exchanged pleasantries, but before long, Trump, according to several current and former U.S. officials, asked Andrew McCabe a pointed question. Whom did he vote for in the 2016 election? McCabe said he didn't vote. Trump, the officials said, also vented his anger at McCabe over the several hundred thousand dollars in donations his wife, a Democrat, received for her failed 2015 Virginia state Senate bid from a political action committee controlled by a close friend of Hillary Clinton. McCabe, who has spent more than two decades at the bureau, found the conversation with Trump disturbing said one former U.S. official inside the FBI. Officials familiar with the exchange expressed frustration that a civil servant, even a very senior agent in the number two position, would be asked how he voted and criticized for his wife's political leanings by the president. One person said the Trump-McCabe conversation is of interest to special counsel Robert Mueller. Joining us now, Betsy Woodruff, a politics reporter for the Daily Beast and an MSNBC contributor, and back with us, Matt Miller. And, and Matt, what would be the special prosecutor's interest in that exchange with Andrew McCabe about how he voted in the presidential election? I think the interesting thing about this exchange is you have to remember the context in which it occurred. This is right after Jim Comey was fired, and Andrew McCabe was essentially there meeting the president in a job interview. He was up for the position of acting director. Uh, the administration interviewed him and several other candidates for that position, and he was potentially in line to be nominated to be the full-time director. So the president is sending a very clear signal to him in that meeting just as he did in his first meetings with Jim Comey after taking office, that I expect you to be loyal to me. I want to know that you're someone that has my back, someone that supported me in the election. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, let you know that I disagreed with the fact that your wife uh, was supported by an ally of Hillary Clinton. He was telling the, the FBI director very clearly, I think if you want to get this job, I expect you to be loyal to me, not to the Constitution, not to the rule of law, but to me, Donald Trump. And uh, Betsy, it's very clear, as we see in this sequence, Donald Trump has gone through uh, three, F three FBI directors so far, one acting director, two directors, uh, that he has no inhibitions, uh, apparently still, about tampering with the FBI director. 
Right, and it's really extraordinary just how much the senior ranks of the Justice Department have been roiled during the Trump presidency. Jim Comey was fired, of course. Rod Rosenstein, the deputy attorney general, reportedly threatens to resign over pressure that President Trump and the White House put on him. Chuck Rosenberg, now a contributor to this network, stepped down as head of the Drug Enforcement Administration, which is part of the Department of Justice, after saying publicly that he was concerned that President Trump appeared to condone police misconduct. Conduct. And of course, now we have Chris Ray reportedly threatening to resign as well. That's an entire spate of incredibly powerful people with extraordinary amounts of responsibility, either being forced out of their jobs or, or threatening to leave their jobs because of, of one reason. And the one reason is President Donald Trump. It's having a dramatic behind the scenes effect on the way the Department of Justice as an institution works. But that said, what makes this whole situation even more unusual is that it points to a slight ham-handedness in Trump's firing of James Comey. Anyone who's familiar with the way that leadership of the FBI works could have told you Comey and McCabe were close. Firing Comey and replacing him with McCabe would be like firing Comey and replacing him with Comey. On top of that, Chris Wray is also very much part of this same cohort of experienced federal law enforcement officials that almost came of age in the wake of 9-11. Chris Wray was in the Justice Department while Bob Mueller was heading the FBI as that institution turned into primarily a counterterrorism institution. These guys all know each other. They've known each other for years. They're close. They get along. The idea that Chris Ray would let Donald Trump bully him into firing someone who he's known, who's part of that circle, just strains credulity. And it all points to the fact that Trump just doesn't seem to know how to make the FBI become loyal to him as much as that clearly seems to be his goal. And, and Matt, you begin to think as you listen to the way the president talks about this that if you are a Democrat or married to a Democrat, you can't possibly uh, be a fair uh, FBI agent uh, or officer at the same time. Uh, and then when you tell the president that Robert Mueller is a Republican, uh, then apparently even being a Republican isn't good enough. Yeah, look, I mean, uh, what Donald Trump wants is not uh, an adherence to the rule of law. He doesn't want someone that's in that job that is going to call balls and strikes based on how they see, the, see them. He wants someone that's going to call balls, on, balls and strikes in his favor. I think, you know, Betsy makes a really good point about this kind of ethos among, among people like Chris Ray, people like Bob Mueller, people who have come up in the Department of Justice, or people that have never worked there it's kind of hard to describe how ingrained this culture of independence is. So for all of them to see what Donald Trump does on a daily basis, you know, to have any one of these officials threaten to resign in protest in a normal administration would be a huge occurrence. But we've seen it from just about every senior official in the Justice Department in this administration. And it still, none of it is ever enough for Donald Trump. And none of it ever backs him down. We still see him, you know, on almost a daily basis going after the FBI on Twitter, complaining about the attorney general, sometimes complaining about the deputy attorney general. He will not be satisfied until this Justice Department has, one, shut down the investigation into him, and two, launched investigations into his political opponents. Anything short of that, he is going to continue to rail publicly and privately about this department. Matt Miller and Betsy Woodruff, thank you both for joining us tonight. I really appreciate it. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC.